good morning all i am fasil rahman today i am going to discuss my seminar topic nets and filters from topology before moving to nets we want to discuss uh, about the directed sets and so i am starting with the definition of directed set let uh, d be a non empty set and greater than or equal to be a binary operation defined on d and satisfying the following axioms the first axiom is m greater than or equal to m for all m element of d so it is clear that for every m element of d satisfies m greater than or equal to m where the greater than or equal to where the binary operation greater than or equal to is defined as per given then the second axiom if m greater than or equal to n and n greater than or equal to p then m greater than or equal to p where m n where m comma n comma p are members of set d then the third axiom for every m comma n element of d then there exist p element of n such that p greater than or equal to m and p greater than or equal to n it is clear that for every two element in d then there exists an another element p then it is always p always p is greater than or equal to m and p is always greater than or equal to n if the three axiom that we mentioned above are satisfied then the non empty set d with a binary operation greater than or equal to is a directed set but the symbol greater than or equal to we taken some time it its usual times just a notation for the binary operation so it can be read as uh, not greater than or equal to uh, just it follows for more clearance now we can deal with uh, an example of directed set let we can take our d set of all natural number or a set of all real numbers and the greater than or equal to in the useful sense then this will form a directed set why because first one for every m belong to n or r we know that m is greater than or equal to m here the greater than or equal to are used in useful sense he is using like that 5 is greater than or equal to 5 if you are talking about r root 2 is greater than or equal to root 2 and 5 by 4 is greater than or equal to 5 by 4 so every m in belonging to n or r is m is greater than or equal to m then the second one for every m n p belonging to n or belonging to r m greater than or equal to n and n greater than or equal to p implies m greater than or equal to p it is true that because the transitivity of greater than or equal to in the useful sense the first natural number m is greater than or equal to the second natural number n and the second natural number is greater than or equal to uh, the third natural number which implies the first natural number m is greater than or equal to the third natural number p similarly for the set of real numbers thirdly for every m comma n belong to natural number or belonging to a real number take p to be maximum of this m and n then then p is greater than or equal to m and p is greater than or equal to n that means all the three axioms satisfies then the set of all natural number together with uh, the uh, operation greater than or equal to in the useful sense or 
So the set of all real number with uh, greater than or equal to operation in the, in the useful sense became the directed sets. So n greater than or equal to is a directed set and r greater than or equal to b will be a directed set. Uh, this will be the uh, trivial example uh, to understand the directed set. I think all of you understood uh, the directed set and its trivial example. Similar examples are mentioned in the pages, so you people can go through it. To define a net, uh, we want to uh, discuss uh, directed, what is directed set and, uh, and now we have already discussed it and then now here we want to discuss what is the resident subset of a directed set and a cofinal subset of a directed set. Firstly, we discuss a residual subset of a directed set D. Let D be with the greater than or equal to a binary operation be a directed set. Then a subset E of D is said to be a residual subset of D. If there exists a not element of D such that for every a greater than or equal to a naught were a element of e that means after a particular stage each and every element of d is belongs to subset of e when the subset e is called residual subset of the reset set d and now similarly we discuss what is Cofinal subset of directed set D. Let D together with uh, greater than or equal to binary operation be a directed set. Then a subset E of D is said to be a cofinal subset of D. If for every a, 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 below, a belong to D, there exists some B belong to D. <laughs> such that b follows a and b uh, belongs to e that means you take any element in d there is an element in d which follows the particular element that element belongs to set e then e will be called the cofinal subset of d for more clearance uh, I can give example for both residual subset and a cofinal and cofinal subset. We know very well that n with greater than or equal to is a directed set. Let E be a subset of n such that E is equal to n minus set of all 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Then E is a residual subset of N because there exists element 8 in N such that for every A follows 8 where A element of E. The subset E does not contain set 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Then the elements of E are uh, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, etc. In this set E, there is a stage at 8. After that, all are element of E. And it is always greater than or equal to 8. That is 8 greater than or equal to 9, 8 greater than or equal to 10, 8 greater than or equal to 11, etc. So, E is a residual subset of N. Now move on to the second example with the same uh, directed set. With another <laughs> subset of N to understand the concept of cofinal subset of N. So we can take E as even or odd or prime. So now I am taken here E as odd number 
ஈக்குவல் டு செட் ஆஃப் ஆல் ஒன் த்ரீ ஃபைவ் செவன் நைன் இலெவன் எக்ஸட்ரா அண்ட் ஈஸ் எ கோஃபைனல் சப்செட் ஆஃப் டி பிகாஸ் இஃப் யூ டேக் எனி எலமெண்ட் இன் டி ஃபார் ஆல் என் எலமெண்ட் ஆஃப் டி தேர் எக்ஸிஸ்ட் எம் ஈக்குவல் டு டூ என் ப்ளஸ் எலமெண்ட் இன் டி சச் தாட் எம் எலமெண்ட் இன் இ எம் பிலாங்ஸ் டு இ If you take n as 100, then uh, 100 belongs to D. Then there exists m equal to 100 uh, to 100 plus 1, which is always element of D and also belong to E because E contains all the odd numbers. 201 is a odd number. I think all of you understood the concept residual subset of a directed set and a cofinal subset of a directed set. Now slowly and slowly basically moving, uh, moving on to the definition of nets. Before moving to the concept of nets, let us have a clear cut concept of sequence. What are sequences? It will help more and more to clear the nets the concept of nets so let us see what is sequence actually a sequence is a, a function with the domain set of all natural number suppose we define a function a function f from a set of all natural number to set of all real number it is a sequence where the function f of n is equal to n by 2n plus 1 in the function f instead of f we we generate an x then f of n become x of n x of n is equal to n by 2n plus 1 instead of x of n we you can ins- uh, we can write x suffix n xn then x of 1 is equal to x1 x of 2 is equal to x2 etc x of n is equal to xn now we try to understand the definition of net and that is a function with a domain as a directed set from the both the definitions of sequence and net it is clear that sequence is a particular case of nets that means every sequence is, is a net but every net is not a sequence another basic uh, difference between sequence and net is that a sequence contain infinitely many terms that is not a case necessary in nets net may contain finite number of terms also now i am giving example for this first of all x b a non empty set x not equal to 5 moreover x is a finite set meanwhile x is a non empty finite set then power set of x with a subset of is a directed set then define a function f from power set of x to r then define f of a is equal to order of a where a in f of a is a subset of power set of x and order of a means number of elements in a suppose f of z a b d is equal to 3 then that is order of a b d is equal to 3 number of elements in a b d is equal to 3 so i have defined the function f of a like this and this function is also a net because uh, the domain p of x power set of x with sub uh, together with the subset is a directed set but it is not a sequence first 
first of all domain of uh, the function is not a set of all natural number secondly x is finite so power set of x is also finite that means the domain is finite set then this net will have only finite set then there are three things to understand the convergence of net the limit points of net the cluster point of net the three basic thing are necessary to be understand actually f from d to x is a net uh, d with uh, binary operation greater than or equal to is a directed set in some book the notation for the net is f comma d comma x greater than or equal to where f is a function for uh, defined from d to x where uh, greater than or equal to be a binary operation of uh, direction set d now i am moving on three basic definitions if function f from d to x and y is a subset of x then f is said to be in y in y if f of a belongs to y for every a belongs to d here uh, i have given the diagrammatic representation of the above which represent each and every element in the set d or the set d have a image in y images in y and the set and the set the set y is a subset of x secondly f is said to be eventually in y eventually in y if there exists every a belongs to d such that for every a not greater than equal to a that every a not follows a or a not element of y so let us make it clear by seeing the diagram the function f from d to x where is a directed set with the element a b c d f etc what the definition says that there is an element in capital d suppose small d is element of d here i am taking uh, the elements of capital d in order that means b follows a c follows b d follows c etc that means there is an increasing order like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on that means here our uh, f is greater than or equal to d d is greater than or equal to c c is greater than or equal to b b is greater than or equal to a. so they are in a particular order so there exists one element small d such that now for a very a not greater than or equal to d for a not element of y that means that means uh, after the element d each elements uh, including the element d have images on capital y and the above a b c have no images in y and have images in x and now i'm moving on to the third important thing once again uh, f from d to x be a net uh, with a, a greater than or equal to is a binary operation of d y is a subset of x then f is said to be frequently in y frequently in y if every a belongs to d there exists b belongs to d such that b follows a and fb element of y fb belongs to Diagra diagrammatically we can see once again 
f from a function from d to x where a b c d h g h is etc are element of d and y is a subset of x so what is the definition that f is frequently in y so whatever a taken in d suppose we take b element of d there will be at least one element d whose image in y suppose we take another element in d called h frequently take uh, an element j whose image in y and the process is so on then such a case is known as f is frequently in y so three things first of all what is net secondly what is the basic difference between net and secants and thirdly a function f from d to x and y subset of x uh, is said to be in y and eventually in y and frequently in y i think all of you understood the the uh, these things now we will move on to another topic filter filters filter anonymity family f of subset of anonymity set x is called filter on x if it satisfy the following condition that means there is a non empty set x which subset which subset is a non empty non empty family of f such non empty family of subsets are known as filter on x if it satisfies the following condition first one f is non empty phi not element of f and the second one is if if a element of f and b, b superset of a if a implies b is belongs to f and the third one a a element of f and b element of f implies a intersection b elements of f that is if a both a and b belongs to f then their intersection is always also belongs to f then the above three condition with together with the statement will give filter now there is an example for filter let x is equal to set a b c and let f1 is equal to set of all, all x and f2 is equal to uh, set a b comma x and f3 is equal to set b c comma x all these f's are are subset of x and the three conditions satisfied therefore they are filters on x now we go through the definition of filter base let x be any non empty set and a non empty family b of subset x is called filter base if the non empty set b satisfy the two condition the first one is which is a non empty set phi not element of not belongs to b and the second one is b1 element of b e and b2 element of b then there exists b1 sorry then there exists b subset of b1 intersection b2 such a non empty family which is subset of x is called filter base now there is a theorem that every filter is a filter base to prove this theorem first of all we define filter then from filter we get filter base we know that 
filter is uh, a non empty family f of subset of a non empty set is called filter on x if it is satisfy the three condition the first one is phi not element of f and the second one is a element of f and b element of f implies a intersection b element of f and the third one is a belongs to f and b is a superset of f then b belongs to f from these three condition we get the filter base b is a non empty that is phi non element of b and f1 element of b and f2 element of b it gives that f1 intersection f2 is a subset of b by comparing both the tree of filter and filter base we get that every filter is a filter base but uh, its vice versa is not true now i am concluding my seminar there are several uh, there are more and more to study about nets and filter so you people can go through it my permitted time is over so i'm stopping here thank you